Hi everyone, I'm Matt from Looking to Bitcoin. And today we're going to be doing a Bitcoin roundup to discuss the current market conditions. We're going to try and gain some insight into Bitcoin's recent positive price action and how we should consider positioning ourselves going forward. To do this, we'll be using a number of resources that are all freely available on lookintobitcoin.com, your number one source for Bitcoin information. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. So right now we're just on the 200 weekly moving average heat map chart here on Look Into Bitcoin. And as we can see over the past few days and weeks really, we've had some rather positive price action. And if we just zoom in here, we can see the 200 weekly moving average, which has historically been a great indicator of a, potentially a great place to start accumulating and has historically been a very strong buy support level for traders and investors wanting to invest more in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. We can see over the past few weeks, we actually dipped beneath this 200 weekly moving average line but only for a very brief period of time during that time a lot of people on social media platforms were potentially calling for further retracements to potentially the $20,000 level or maybe even to lower lows in the Bitcoin price than we already set late last year. But what we could see is we were only very briefly beneath this 200 weekly moving average line before rallying up fairly substantially with a considerable amount of strength from the Bitcoin buyers who defended this level and really showed a lot of interest to accumulate potentially because they thought accumulating beneath the 200 weekly moving average was maybe the last opportunity they'd get to buy Bitcoin at a considerable discount. So with this most recent move, a lot of people are potentially in disbelief at Bitcoin's strength. So what do we actually mean when we refer to disbelief? So if you haven't already seen this chart, it's a fairly famous chart within investing called the Wall Street Cheat Sheet. And as we can see, we have periods where Bitcoin or any assets price is rallying substantially to the upside. And this outlines the potential sentiment and feeling and emotion amongst investors, going from optimism to euphoria before further drawdown brings complacency, denial, anger, and depression finally. And I think Bitcoin has had a fairly substantial amount of drawdown that certainly led to some fairly strong emotions amongst traders and investors. But eventually, as most things are cyclical, we do finally regain some positive price section. And we can see usually the first sign of positive price action we get is usually met with disbelief. So we can see here, this is a sucker's rally before saying this rally will fail just like all the others. And especially because a lot of people may have anticipated lower prices to accumulate, they may currently be left sidelined, which and they'd bought more or didn't even manage to buy any in the first place. So a lot of people who maybe even sold at the bottom are in disbelief and are trying or maybe even hoping that Bitcoins go lower because they simply can't believe the positive price action we're seeing. But if we go to something like the net unrealized profit and loss chart, which is subtracting the realized cap, which is the average accumulation price of all Bitcoin on the network from the market cap and just dividing by the market cap to give us this net and realized profit and loss or NUPL, which is basically just showing us the current amount of profit on the market from Bitcoin holders and investors. So beneath this zero line, it indicates that majority of holders are currently at a loss on their positions. And as this increases, it indicates further amount of profit amongst holders. But what we can see, if we look at something like the previous cycle in 2015, 2016, the price action's fairly similar, where we come up from the this capitulation area have a fairly substantial rally from the bottoms we set and then we have a little bit of a pullback before substantially rallying higher so if i just draw on the chart here it might be a little bit more obvious where we come up have this retracement before rallying substantially higher and to me at least from the bottoms we've set where we come into this lighter orange zone retrace and then bounce fairly substantially higher this looks like fairly similar price action and data we see on the NUPL ratio. So I think this is a fairly good area to be in. And obviously this would lead a lot of people to be in disbelief at this positive price section, because usually people, as we said, are hoping for lower prices to accumulate as much as they can at the bottom. And as soon as we see this rather fast rally up and rebound in the price section, it maybe leave some people a little bit angry of the situation. Especially when we look at something like Bitcoin's comparison versus more traditional assets like the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and a few good performing tech stocks like Tesla and Apple, we can see over the past year, Bitcoin has actually underperformed all of these, which has led many people to think, maybe my capital isn't packed in the right spot within cryptocurrencies. Maybe I need to look to more traditional investments. And obviously during periods of downturns in the market, more risk on and speculative assets such as cryptocurrencies are likely to perform worse. But then on the flip side to that, in the good times, in the upwards price action and more positive momentum periods of price action, we usually see these more speculative risk on assets far outperform. So if we look on more long-term basis, like the yearly, obviously things don't look ideal, but if we go to something a bit more recent, like the six month 
performance, we can see this is pretty much aligned with when Bitcoin bottomed in price, but we can see this is the best performing asset, even compared to Tesla, which has had a monumental rally to the upside in the past few months. So again, this is leading many people to potentially be a little bit salty about the situation, considering the underperformance and the more recent outperformance that maybe they had the capital packed in the wrong area. And two other charts we'll look at what I think really solidify the fact that many people may be in disbelief and we may be in for some more positive price action going forward is if we just look at a few charts and initially what we can do is look at something we discussed about a month ago here on the channel about Bitcoin dominance trying to break through the 50% level which has been a key level of resistance for a number of years for the Bitcoin price action and this Bitcoin dominance is just the total amount of the Bitcoin market cap that is made up solely of Bitcoin. So if we go to trading view, I've actually loaded up two charts here. On the bottom, we have the Bitcoin dominance and above just something that I'll discuss in a moment. But we can see here, we've actually surpassed this 50% level in the Bitcoin dominance, which is maybe showing us that a lot of liquidity is going from other altcoins, stable coins, into Bitcoin, which is very good because we've seen historically throughout all of Bitcoin's transitionary period from bear cycle into bull cycle, we've seen this dominance move rather substantially to the upside. So this maybe gives us even more confidence that we are in the new early stages of a bull cycle. And a lot of people may be in disbelief holding assets that are underperforming compared to Bitcoin. Now on the top here, what we have is Bitcoin versus the M2 money supply. Now a lot of the time we're measuring Bitcoin versus the US dollar, which makes sense given that that's where a vast majority of the liquidity is coming from. But if we look at the Bitcoin versus M2 money supply, or the total value of all cash and cash equivalents in the US specifically in this circumstance, we can see that once we actually compare Bitcoin to this M2 money supply, it gives a slightly different picture than just the standard BTC chart. We can see we broke beneath the previous all-time high we set in 2017, but due to the fact the M2 money supply was increasing fairly substantially following the COVID 2020 pandemic and the negative price action we had there, once we actually dipped beneath this previous all-time high, we hadn't actually broken above that yet. We have had a few days and maybe even a couple of weeks where we did break very briefly before retracing beneath that. But what you can see here with this price action we're currently seeing, we have actually broken convincingly above this previous level of resistance that we'd failed to break through previously. So I think given that the fact that maybe a lot of traders and investors are watching this, because not only does this take into account the USD increase in the Bitcoin price, but also when comparing to the money supply and taking into account that maybe some of the previous cycle was inflationary driven, especially when we look at something like the previous all time highs, which and just the standard USD chart shows that this peak actually far out seeded the previous all time high we set just in early 2021. That maybe a large influence of the M2 money supply is influential on the Bitcoin price. And the fact that we've now convincingly broke above the previous 2017 all time high really gives us, again, some more confidence that this is a final break of the trend in the downwards price action. And we are in the new early stages of a bull cycle, leaving a lot of people in disbelief. One other large catalyst for this positive price action recently may be the rather large fundamental news that BlackRock, or the largest asset managers in the world, have filed for a Bitcoin ETF or an exchange traded fund. Now, this has been a large topic of conversation for years in the Bitcoin space, really, because an ETF being filed would open the door for huge amounts of institutional interest and liquidity, as it really simplifies the process for these more traditional firms to actually invest money into the cryptocurrency space. Previously, this has been rather difficult and other filings such as through Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust haven't really come to fruition as a positive and really representative performance of the Bitcoin price action. So maybe this ETF is going to drive some more liquidity, interest and hopefully positive price action into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So just to summarize, given Bitcoin's strong rebound following a brief pullback beneath the 200 weekly moving average, many traders and investors anticipating even lower prices have been left sidelined and in disbelief of the Bitcoin price action. And while Bitcoin has underperformed many assets over the last few months or year, we're beginning to see signs that Bitcoin is about to far exceed most assets performance. We've seen most recently on a six month and if we even went to lower charts, that Bitcoin is really starting to outpace most traditional assets and maybe we're about to get more capital rotation into the more risk on and speculative assets like cryptocurrencies. And given the rise in Bitcoin's dominance through a crucial level of that 50% thing we talked about previously, we may be about to see large capital inflows into BTC, even from stable coins and other altcoins as most digital asset liquidity flows into Bitcoin. And especially given the recent news regarding BlackRock's filing for a Bitcoin ETF, maybe we're about to see even more institutional inflows into Bitcoin to really kick off the new bull cycle.
If you like this video, then please visit lookintobitcoin.com where you can also consider becoming a site subscriber to gain access to live charts, in-depth newsletters, indicator alerts, private training view scripts, and more of a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know in the comments down below, do you believe we're currently in a disbelief stage if we were to mimic the Wall Street cheat sheet? Or do you think this is just another potentially bear market rally and we're due for lower prices? Or do you think we're potentially due for a more exuberant price rise, especially given the fundamental news we've had recently? Let me know in the comments down below and on social media. I look forward to reading and replying to all of them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.